So it's uh, Psalm 10, and Psalm 10 uh, in the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, becomes one psalm with nine. Nine and ten, it's one psalm. And uh, so if I, was, uh, if I, if I were to read uh, the, uh, the, the, the Russian Bible to you, so it also would be one long, long psalm. So. So, but in the, in the Hebrew Bible, it's uh, separate, you know, in the Hebrew text. Uh, these are two separate Psalms, Psalm 9, Psalm 10. So, Psalm 10, why do you hide yourself? The Psalm consists of two parts. The first part, verse 1 through 11, the description of the wicked. And uh, verse 12 through 18, it's... Uh, when you pray, when David is praying, it's a prayer against persecutors, against uh, evil people. So now before we read this uh, text, uh, the description of the wicked, I want you to thank, uh, uh, we will read this description of the wicked, it's David, it's 1,000 years before Jesus. Uh, we are 3,000 years apart, you know. And, I, and then uh, the Apostle Paul, in first Tim, uh, Second Timothy chapter three, he describes evil people. So that is one thousand years later after David, right? And I want uh, us to think about wicked people nowadays. <laughs> so have they changed or are they the same, right? From David to us, <sighs> are the wicked people the same, right? Or maybe not? So. Who'd like to read it for us, verse 1 through 11? Why, O oh Lord, you stand far away? Why do you hide yourself in the times of trouble? In arrogance, the wicked hotly pursue the poor. Let them be caught in the schemes that they have devised. For the wicked boasts of the desires of his soul, and the one greedy for gain curses and renounces the Lord. In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. His ways prosper at all times. Your judgments are on high, out of his sight. As for all his foes, he puffs at them. He says in his heart, I shall not be moved. Throughout all generations, I shall not meet adversity. His mouth is filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. He sits in ambush in the villages. In hiding places, he murders the innocent. His eyes stealthily watch for the helpless. He lurks in ambush like a lion in his thicket. He lurks that he may seize the poor. He seizes the poor when he draws him into his net. The helpless are crushed, sink down, and fall by his might. He says in his heart, God has forgotten. He has hidden his face. You will never see it. All right. So the first question, why, O oh Lord, do you stand far away? Uh, and this is, um, everybody who follows the Lord has this feeling when you want the Lord to act right away, and the Lord is not acting right away. So then you think, O oh Lord, why, O oh Lord, do you stand far away? So it's just because we don't see all the ways of the Lord and what he is going to do and when he is going to do. So uh, one commentator says it's not the Lord who stands far away. Uh, it's us through our unbelief <laughs> stand, stand away from the Lord. But in any event, so we, we can relate to this feeling, right? So when you want God to do something about something and he's not doing it as we want him to do it, right? Or at the time when we want him to do it. Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far away? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? So this is not just about, uh, well, I have this you know, sickness or I have this financial problem. Uh, it's more of, uh, he's talking about society, I think. 
So because uh, he talks about those people who have power and uh, oppress the innocent and the helpless and uh, do all kinds of bad things. So it's about those who are in power. So, and when you think, okay, so if I was to compare uh, today's people in power, godless people in power, would uh, the description fit what David is uh, saying here? Let us see arrogance, verse 2, in arrogance the wicked hotly pursue the power. Now, when you think about the power, it can be, you know, kings, princes, like the administration, the government, but it also can be like rich people, right? Rich people, like corporations and businesses, right? Now we think about, I don't know, Twitter, Apple, <laughs> Facebook, the government, I mean, whatever, right? Disney, right? So you think, okay, okay. So a couple of years ago, I saw that even the Black & Decker, is it Black & Decker? Mm -hmm. Tools, mm -hmm. has nothing to do with like education or entertainment. The guy, the old guy who founded this, had to make a statement supporting and promoting and celebrating. And you think, you're making tools. Why do you need to do this? Oh, he's still, you know, the marketing people said you need to do this, you know, but because, you know, all the other companies are doing this, right? I'm like, I don't know much about this guy, but <laughs> I thought he's in a different uh, industry, you know, where you don't probably need to do all that, right? Mm. David says the poor, what is he referring to? The regular people. Poor how? Poor financially? Or are there, are there other forms of poverty we were talking about here? Well, this, the, the, the society was structured very simple back then. So you have king, you have king's people, you have rich, uh, they are rich, and then there is the rest of the population. And uh, if you are middle class or lower middle class or, you know, I mean, back then, so you're just regular person and they can oppress you, they can come and, you know, take something from you or harm you or do whatever they want to do to you, right? So it's just the regular, it's not like poor, it's not, there is no middle class. I don't think there is middle class in our understanding, like, you know. So we're talking about financial poor. Yeah, it goes, goes hand in hand. It sounds like it's power and money. When power you know. and money, yes. And then there was the poor. Yeah, people who are not in... Power. Yeah. So, so what I'm struck by here is your example of the, the Black & Decker guy um, saying he had to do something. Well, no, he didn't. I mean, he didn't really have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, he probably would have lost his company or his company would have ditched him. But did he actually have to renounce God or, or basically betray whatever faith he had in God to save his company? The answer is no. He, he still had a choice, but he did it anyway. So that's a that's yeah that's that yeah, that's a very good. I mean, so when we talk about poor, I, I mean, I are there other forms of poverty besides financial that make you? prone to fall into wickedness or to, or to fall prey to oh, poor, uh, poor, the poor are the victims uh, in this situation. I would say that, I would say if we were projecting it onto our society, I would say regular people are the poor, like, you know. For example, uh, if you get in trouble and you do not have uh, um, uh, Connections. I, I was thinking about attorney, like uh, general, you know, if you're not connected to judges or uh, you're, you know, they will do whatever they want with you. But if you are well connected, they will look the other way, right? So rules for thee, but not for me, right? Well, if you look at verse 3, they talk about, in the second, the second part, the one greedy for gain, curses when not Good about that is 
these companies are now seeing the reality is you get one to go broke. And there are, are these companies now are collapsing financially, losses of 40 to 50 to even 70 percent. And they're realizing to cater to a small voice here is costing our investors and everybody else involved in this. So people are beginning, companies are beginning to rethink this. Disney is one of them, but I don't think they'll change. That, that's right, that's right. But, huh? Here and now, but in biblical times, in this time though, the rich could have literally gave and praised God and said it was for him, from him, but not actually believed. I mean, is it, doesn't the potential exist here though that there was, I mean, they were more apt to say things like that, you know, like, I mean, I think about people who do that, do that today, you know, how genuine is, is that individual, but. If they truly, uh, whether their faith is genuine, right. so that's. Today we are, but back then, did you have structures and the leaders and the government that were saying, you know, all praise to God, but really, in their minds, they were, you know, saying, uh-uh, I did this, I did this. Well, it's David, uh, I mean, he writes, uh, I mean, this is the period of kings, which uh, follows the period of judges, right. and we see that in the, uh, I mean, judges, it's like everybody did what he, pl yeah, so which means you are right. Uh, I, I think that uh, David has problem with people's uh, commitment to, to God, and yeah, there may be rich people who would just pay lip service, you know, uh, just, yeah, I believe. Uh, I, this stuff tales what we were talking about a couple of days ago. He's quoted the scripture. It's easier for uh, a, a camel to pass through the eye right, of right. a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's right. There is huge, uh, with these companies, I mean, if they're profit-driven, you know, they want to make profit, they don't care. Tomorrow you say, well, you all, you know, we all worship uh, Mickey Mouse, and they will be worshiping Mickey Mouse and giving praises to Mickey Mouse, right? So, I mean, you just change it, and they will uh, say, well, you know, it sells, you know, but, but, but that's right. Uh, when you, I mean, when you point, I mean, that's right uh, to point that, uh, 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 Kelly said, said that, that uh, the one greedy for gain curses and renounces the Lord. I mean, just renounces the Lord. And, uh, and by the way, watch Disney because even though they changed CEOs, he came out and made a statement basically that they're going to go back to um, the way they were doing business before. So, so which means... It's going to be a more subtle... Mm -hmm. so, so which means it's they're still not... Gonna, they're still uh, going to support. Which means it's not, maybe not sincere kind of repentance, it's just business move. It's the right it's thing to do. Service. It's not political. He says he yes. doesn't consider it political. He considers it the right thing to do. Right, right, right. Well, but it's all against against God, right? They know that, I mean, Christians and the Christianity in this country, uh, maybe Judaism as well, represent like traditional values or what the, you know, God, and the, those values are coming from the scriptures, right? From, from the Bible. So they, they know when they're fighting against the Bible, biblical values, which they call uh, prejudice and bigotry, right? And uh, biases, right? So this is all is labeled as something bad and you need to fight with that. So in the pride, the next four, uh, verse four is pride. <laughs> in the pride of his faith. The wicked does not seek him, does not seek uh, uh, the Lord, right? All his thoughts are there is no God. Would that apply to today's time? I think, yeah. And then he's making money, right? So his ways prosper at all times. Your judgments are on high out of his sight. So because he's doing well, because, uh, you know, there is power and connection and you can fly on your private jet, you know, <laughs> to your private island. He, that person doesn't see the judgment of the Lord, right? So he thinks everything is... Everybody else has to sacrifice because what they're doing is more important. Sure. For all his foes, he puffs at them. He says in his heart, I shall not be moved. Throughout all generations, I shall not meet adversity. So this is pride, right? I shall not be moved, yeah. 
his mouth is filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. And then think about the mass media, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> what is happening? Right. He sits in ambush in the villages and hiding places. He murders the innocent. Well, maybe they don't do it right now, but I would say today, because the government has monopoly on violence, you can do these things. You don't need to be sitting in the ambush. You can just file a lawsuit or send a persecutor, <laughs> prosecutor, right? And, and they will do the job, you know, they will, you know, uh, try to put you out of business and, you know. And we see that the, the guy was the baker, the Christian baker, uh, the state uh, was destroying him and his business and everything, you know, just actively like, you know, lawyer, uh, uh, government officials in different positions, you know. So you don't need now to sit in ambush to attack uh, somebody who is innocent, right? His eyes stealthily watch for the helpless. He lurks in ambush like a lion in his thicket. He lurks that he may seize the poor. He seizes the poor when he draws him into his net. The helpless are crushed. Well, it's power. It shows that they can do with you. But they can put you in prison. They can arrest you. They can put you out of business. They can do with you whatever they want, right? So this is what he does. Uh, the helpless are crushed, sank down, and fall by his might. He says in his heart, God has forgotten this proud person, wicked person. God has forgotten. He has hidden his face. He will never see it. What do you think? So human heart, they talk about technology. We made so much progress. But the human heart is the same, right? <laughs> human heart doesn't change. And the Bible uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is the book about uh, human heart, the human heart. So our sinfulness and also the Savior. So now the Apostle Paul, if you go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, which is New Testament, and in our Pew Bibles it's 1182. So... 2 Timothy chapter 3, now Paul is describing the last times, and he also is talking about the wicked, the wickedness. So it's 1182, so it's 2 Timothy chapter 3. So verse 1 through uh, 9. Uh, so who would like to read it for us? But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burned with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth, men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. <clears throat> but they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. Okay, so this is the description of wickedness in the last days. So it's 1,000 years later in comparison to David. Probably very similar, right? They probably, yeah. Obviously, they, he's writing about it, so if it's already happening, then and it's still happening. Still happening. But all this arrogance, proud, uh, um, slanderous, lovers of pleasure rather, rather than lovers of God. And then, Robin, what you said, uh, um, 
verse 5, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. <laughs> the appearance of godliness. Kind of paying lip service, just appearing, you know, godly. But uh, so, okay, so, so we shall not be surprised when this thing is, I, I mean, we, we shouldn't be surprised that these things are happening, right? So we shouldn't be shocked or crushed or, so we need to understand that we are representatives of a different kingdom. We play on God's team and uh, where we can, uh, we should bring the truth and light and, you know, we should resist. And, and you're right, you know, uh, Jeff, sh sh you, you, when you are presented a choice with a choice, either, you know, to be faithful or to keep the money you have, right? You know, so what are you planning to do, right? So, I mean, are you, for the, for, for, if, if we go back to Psalm 10, uh, and the one greedy for gain curses and renounces the Lord. So do you want for gain, whatever it may mean, uh, renounce and curse the Lord? And, and we can see that, uh, again, commentators say that in the description of the wicked in Psalm 10, you can see this indignation that, I mean, this is like abomination, uh, with sin, indignation with sin. So all this, all this stuff is, is not good. And it's so interesting how Christians uh, uh, became, uh, because they don't know the, neither the scriptures nor the power of God, many Christians, they kind of, I'm welcoming and loving and, you know, I accept any sin, I celebrate anything, you know, we are, and, and it leads to, 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 to uh, people converting from Christianity to Islam. And one of the reasons is, well, Muslims take their faith seriously and Christians don't. Christians kind of have all these teachings, but they don't live them out, you know? <laughs> and Muslims do, and I'm like, really? You know, this is what is happening, right? Mm, so that's a good question. How we, I don't know, this appearance of godliness. You know what else is interesting here? Is the implied, it's not implied, it's stated that women in their aloneness are weak and yeah. unprotected. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting because they didn't approach them until they were alone. Right. So that also says that there's a known strength and protection of the husband or the male in the house. Right. So he's, he guards the sacredness of their faith. Um, but they're also vulnerable when the husband is away. I mean, that's pretty, I mean, isn't that what the Bible also teaches us is? Right. You know, there's that. Right. That, because I think we talked about the courage, the strength that society has made men out to be. I mean, from the weak. 50s and sitcoms yeah. to weak and, you know, just really have something taken to out. Be laughed at. Yeah, something to be laughed at rather than to be respected. Mm -hmm you know, in your relationship or in your home, and to be taken seriously. So this just kind of says that, hey, when we are alone, we're weak and easily susceptible to influence. And that there is a, I mean, again, a relationship there that's critical. And, and it's also interesting, uh, if you think about what was, has been happening over the last 50 years with this introduction of the pill, uh, contraception, sexual immorality, uh, liberty, so to speak, liberation, which was supposed to make women happy, but in the long run it doesn't make women happy. Now they all visit therapists and they say that now the forecast is that in the next 10 or 15 years, 50%, uh, almost half of women, about 40, 45, will be childless and lonely. And companies who businesses uh, now investing in cat food and wine. Well, because you would have a lot of lonely women, you know, cats and wine. Huh? Let's say old cat ladies. Old cat ladies. Huh? I'm talking about who don't have children. Oh, I mean, I'm just cats and wine with other ladies. That's right, that's right. So this is, this is, and again, 
it, it just business. It's business. Uh, what is happening in business? The, the business world. Right. They are investing in those kind of industries because. Yeah, we have more people with. You know, I mean, we have a dog, right? There's people who have lots of dogs and they would prefer to have a pet than uh, have children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They dress them up like kids. It goes back to what we talked about earlier. It's about money and power. Yes. Yeah. But, but if women, lonely women, uh, can be deceived or are vulnerable in that respect, then what is happening in the society, they produce more lonely women. Right. Which so, creates a bigger market for their products. For their products, but, but also through that you can uh, introduce all kinds of crazy ideas. I was just thinking like, okay, so in women's sports or there was a beauty contest recently and the guy, fat, ugly guy dressed as a woman, won number one, prize number, and all the beautiful ladies, like true women, were kind of applauding and so and you're just like, are you crazy, you know? But, but then you think like it's women, like women who want to be compassionate and loving. Uh, I think that uh, the devil and, I don't, you know, the society is tricking them into this, kind of, okay, this is the way to care, this is the way to love. This is the way, and they, um, you know, try to protect, you know. Well, in their confusion, they're basically, exactly. they're, they're basically sterilizing people so they can't procreate, they can't have children. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is, this is doomed to destroy our civilization if it continues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, they're already talking about the birth rates being down and, and our population being on a decline. And it's only going to get worse the more people that get castrated or, or sterilized mm -hmm. for the sake of what gender, was it, gen, I forget even, if, whatever gender normalization or the right, they, right. trip they think they're on, because it's irreversible. Right. They may have regrets later, but it's too late because they've already physically altered themselves to the point where they can't have children. So, sure, sure, sure. Well, but yeah, women, uh, so just Robin noticed that he was talking about women, right, being deceived. And I was thinking the proportion of lonely women is growing, you know. Uh, it's kind of like you don't need men, you don't need marriage, and then you don't need that. And, you, know. you need cats. Why? I mean, here they're being manipulated into false gods, and then whatever they are. Yeah, and the same is true today. They're looking elsewhere for strong... For, they start looking to things like the government right. and, and stuff like yes. that Good to point. start taking care of them instead right. of a husband and not right. having a family right. and they get that from the government in their mm -hmm. company in their yep. whatever. That's, that's, that's right, that's right. It's interesting to watch this mm -hmm. kind of and see. And then the second half of the psalm is prayer against the persecutors, against the wicked, who are in power. He says, verse 12, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. So this, is, this should be our prayer, right, as well. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. Forget not the afflicted. Why does the wicked renounce God and say in his heart, You will not call to account? But you do see, for you note mischief and vexation that you may take it into your hands. To you the helpless commits himself. You have been the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and evildoer. Call his wickedness to account till you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations perish from his land. O Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, so that man who is of the earth may strike terror no more. Oh, you see this tension, and uh, yeah, we are in, uh, so it's, it's battle. <laughs> I mean, the language is like of a battle, right? Break his arm. <laughs> Break his arm. Break the arm of the wicked and evil doer. 
Call his wickedness to account till you find none. So this is, this is our prayer. So now when Paul says in Ephesians that uh, we are prayer warriors, he, uh, so he, uh, he would say, uh, let us look at Ephesians. Uh, just a sec. Let us go to Ephesians. Because we are not helpless in a sense, I mean, our, our uh, weapon is prayer and our connection to God. So we don't know how, but we can invite God's presence or God's judgment into a situation. We can, uh, even, if the, even if we do not have uh, uh, legal um, power or, you know, uh, power that comes from government. So Ephesians chapter 6, the whole armor of God. Uh, so let us read verse 10 through 20. And please pay attention who our enemies are, and please pay attention to uh, what is our offensive weapon is. It's the word of God. And also pay attention to prayer. So this is how we fight back, right? So this is how David is fighting back. So who, who would read it for us? Who would like to read it for us? Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. You may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, <coughs> and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth, boldly to proclaim the mystery of the Gospel, for which I am the ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Okay. So we saw David as well break the arm of the wicked, you know, call them to account, you know. So, And then uh, Paul is talking that we Christians, I mean, back then, they didn't have any support of the government, right? They were nobodies financially, in terms of connections, right? So, except that, except for being connected to God and being representatives of the king. And this is how you become a warrior of Christ. So you uh, know who your enemy is, spiritual enemy, it's not flesh and blood, right? So, and you use sword, which is the word of God, and then he several times uses prayer, praying, you know, so this is our weapon, right? So and then you have shield of faith, breastplate of righteousness, helmet of salvation, you know, feet, you know, uh, so readiness to preach the gospel, you know, those kind of things, right? So this is how we actually, this is our role, right? So spiritual role. This is how we become representatives of the king, right? He has his king. We have authority, he has authority, and because we are his representatives, he gives us power. It's not our power, it's his power, but uh, we release this power through prayer, right? So this is how we use his power. So people are wicked. <laughs> Those arrogant, prideful, they, they were existed back 
in David's time, in Paul's time, they exist today. So, but David was God's person, Paul was God's person, and we are God's people. So, and we are here, you know, Jesus says, you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth, right? So, so this is our role, uh, so to proclaim the truth. We are kind of like those radio, uh, radio, um, I don't even know how to say when you have um, broadcast. You're just broadcasting the truth, right? So you have like all the stations uh, that are just constantly, I mean, it doesn't matter. Many people listen to you. If you your role, our role is to broadcast the truth. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for this fellowship. Uh, may your Holy Spirit use the words the scriptural words, words from the scriptures, uh, to teach us, to help us mature, to lead us, to uh, 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 guide us, to help us grow in you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.